Randy, welcome back. You were on this show in late March of this year, and you recommended a couple of names. Zim Integrated Shipping, I think it was at 25 or 26 bucks. Denaus around the mid-50s. Since then, Zim's up like 70% and Denaus is up 36%. So congrats, fantastic calls. You made your clients and our viewers a lot of money if they listened. But do you still think there is room to run? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks again for having me, Brian. Um, certainly a lot of room to run, right? Ever since then, rates have only gone in one direction, and that is higher. And that is after most people, myself included, thinking there'd be a little bit of a, a rate pullback after we see all those very elevated levels. But that is not the case, right? There's a few things going on. Demand for containerized goods continues to go higher, although there is a little bit of shifting back from goods, spending on goods to services, Inventory levels across all retail sectors, especially in the U.S., especially in Eastern Europe, that is all in Western Europe, is all going higher, right? So you have to do some restocking. Supply of these ships is very low. There's not going to be much new supply growth until 2023. And then third, congestion continues to get worse and worse, right? It started in L.A. and Long Beach, has spread to Oakland, Seattle. Now, over in South China at the Antian port, you had another COVID outbreak a few weeks ago. And that's starting to spread congestion in China. So these ships and the containers on them are very tight. The rates are continuing to go higher. So yes, we still really like Zim. We still really like the container ship owners like Denaus Corporation, ticker DAC, and Global Ship Lease, ticker GSL. And they literally, they, I mean, I, I hate to compare them to like a Hertz or an Avis, but I mean, this is kind of a complicated world. From what I can tell, they basically just buy ships and then charter or lease them out to other people, either on a short, mid, or long-term basis. So how much flexibility do they have in their pricing? I mean, if I lock into a ship owner for a five-year lease, am I able to profit from that? Or am I thinking, dang, I wish I would have done a shorter-term lease so I can adjust it higher every couple months? Yeah, you're exactly right there, right? There, there's two ways to play it. When you're a container ship owner or a lessor, they call it, right? A Denaus or a global ship lease. You can do kind of short-term charters at extremely high rates. We saw a 65-day charter uh, just about a week ago for $130,000 a day. A year ago, it was $13,000 a day, right? But most owners are opting for two, three, four-year time charters at very elevated rates as well. Denaus locked in four last week above $40,000 a day, right? So you're seeing the, the durations being extended and the rates going higher. So when you look at cash flow visibility and stability, you look at the container ship lessors, the denouses, the global ship leases. Now, the Zims, on the other hand, similar to Amerisk, which is a liner company, they're the ones renting the ship for two, three, four years from Denaus and global ship lease. And then they're charging their importers the Walmarts, the Amazons, the, the Targets, even the Home Depot, which has been in the news recently, um, elevated rates to move those individual containers called TEU, a 20-foot equivalent unit, across the Pacific Ocean, coming into the U.S. East Coast, coming into Europe from Asia. And that's where you really get the massive rate upside is on the line. And, and we were, Randy, remember back in February, you know, the COVID raging, I went down to Charleston, South Carolina, to the Port of Charleston. We showed people that they're sending boxes, what they call them boxes, back empty. It's more profitable to send them back empty to get in line for another load back from Hong Kong to the U.S. than to fill it up with stuff in America. It's incredible. Exactly. Great levels. The liner companies do not want to wait for you to load cargo here in the U.S., put that container back on the ship, and then send it back to Asia, have to unload, yada, yada, yada. So they're much rather just take them, Put any boxes you can. Great. We're going back to pick up a fully laden cargo because we're getting eight, nine, ten thousand dollars per box coming from Asia to the U.S. So we don't want to wait to send yeah. back the. We just want to keep the imports coming. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.